Hey guys, Tokat here, and I thought I'd make a quick video about the game I've been playing a lot of recently, Battle Brothers. The main reason I'm making this video is one, I think it's really cool and I think you guys will enjoy it. And two, it has a lot of DLC, so if you were going to pick it up, I'd recommend doing it in this Steam Summer Sale. So I'm just going to explain what I like about the game, how the game functions, and then I'll do some combat stuff towards the end. And you can enjoy watching me die, because I am terrible at this game. I've got 40 hours in, I've been playing it for a couple of days. It's the kind of game that you have like 10,000 hours. It's very similar to Path of Exile in that sense. So, what do you do in this game? Um, your job is to lead a band of mercenaries around a giant map. You can choose to either have the map unexplored or explored at like character creation or at the start of the game. I like doing it with unexplored because I find it slightly more interesting. And you bounce between the different towns, all the different towns of different like reputations. Um, and you go to a town, they'll give you a set of missions and then you carry out the missions. As you go around the area, you can find little camps like this. And the camps will have different enemies in them based on whereabouts in the world it is. So the southern region of the maps is kind of like deserty. Uh, the Midlands is more like stereotypical medieval Europe. And then the north is kind of like the frozen waste kind of area. Um, so you've got like nomadic um, desert um, raiders, serpents, hyenas, stuff like that in the south. Um, you've got brigands in the middle and then you've got like barbarian types on the top. It's a low fantasy world So there's some like undead stuff. There are some enemy necromancers um, But it's like the enemies have magic not really you so um, Let's just show you what the kind of things you do in terms of Quipping your characters that sort of thing and then I'll show you a town. I'll show you some battle stuff. So um, This is what my current mercenary is um, you can see all my little individual dudes it's a pretty good game for streaming because you can name all your characters and give them little titles. Um, each mercenary um, will have different stats based on a few different things. And the way that you acquire more mercenaries is when you go to towns, you can hire people. And they have a life before you hire them. So this guy, he used to be a thief. Um, so you get like a fun bit of flavor text that's like randomly generated based on the background. And different backgrounds will have different strengths and different weaknesses um so thieves are actually quite durable so they're pretty good for making like tanky characters um whereas this guy for example he was actually one of my starting bros but, like this was a caravan hand so they've got like really good stamina and they're pretty good on that side of things less so on others and there's some like random stat stuff you can see all the stats on the bottom here you can see this like star system when you hire someone they'll get like random stars which basically means when you level them up, they get more of a bonus to that stat. Every time you level up, you can um, apply attributes to three of the stats, and then you get to pick a perk point. And you can actually use some really in-depth builds. And one thing which is pretty cool about this game, it's been out for four years, it's got a bunch of DLC, but if you go on like the Reddits, the Discord, and the YouTube stuff, people still regularly argue of like, this is the way to go, or that's the way to go. And um, because of the way that all the different background stuff works, even if you had like the most defined, this is the meta, these three builds are the best builds to ever play with, you might just like randomly pick up a random mercenary whose stats are so good, it's like, I have to build around these stats. Or you might get like a particularly powerful named weapon, which might be slightly off meta, but the weapon is so powerful you want to build around it anyway. So you get like a bunch of just generic stuff, which is just whatever. Then there's some like weapon specific mastery things you can do. Um, you can also build your characters so that they swap between loads of different weapons based on the situation, which is pretty neat. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot to it on that side of thing. Also, when you hire new mercenaries, um, they can randomly get positive or negative traits. So this guy is asthmatic, which means that um, he generates less fatigue per turn but for example a positive trait would be this guy he has uh, a lower chance of inflicting friendly fire so maybe that'd be really good for shoving him with like a two-handed axe that he swings in a big circle around him or like an arch or something so this is probably like super overwhelming i'll also quickly show you like some of the levels of gear this is very early game so i've got like nothing good but not only are there loads of different weapon types, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different just like base weapon families. 
there are then loads of different weapons within it. So you can have like your basic swords, so the slightly more advanced swords. Um, do I have an example? So like this guy is using um, a pretty like low level-ish um, southern nomad sword compared to, for example, a short sword, which is like the kind of stuff you'd pick up in the middle of the map. And again, based on the different regions you're in, you'll pick up different kinds of items. So for example, these wooden shields are like the basic early shields um, versus these shields, which are from the southern areas, which give slightly better range defense, but have less durability, all right? There's a lot to this game. So I'll quickly beeline back over to the nearest town, which is actually gonna be over here. Um, you can play with mods if you want to traverse around the map faster. I quite like just the default vanilla experience. As you travel, you can get ambushed um, by either random brigands, thugs, orcs, um, a bunch of undead or beasties. You can see you travel faster on the road. Um, so here we go. So you can see these are the examples of when you go to a city, you get a bunch of contracts. There's like a marketplace where you can buy and sell items. Another thing that you can do, which is pretty cool, is every town, based on not only where they are on the map, but your reputation with them, will sell different items at different values. So you can see, for example, this place sells dyes, um, and they're selling them at a premium of 477 gold when they're only worth 400. But if I know that, for example, uh, Subengen um, needed dyes, then I could still buy them and sell them for profit uh, later on. And when you hover over each town you found, you can see what's in the town, like specific buildings they have, their relations. And also certain towns might be under threat. So for example, if one town's been getting hit a lot by beasts, then the villagers might be terrified and that will affect their trade routes and the kind of stuff that's available to you. So this is where you hire people. So you can see all the different backgrounds here. Um, different people also have different starting equipment. So for example, you might see someone and be like, oh, I don't want a beggar or a refugee um, because they can't roll very good stats. But you might be like, oh, but they're really cheap. So they might be a good thing to pick up in case they rolled well. Or I'm just going to have this as a random like bait guy that I just throw at enemy lines to like, mess with their formations. Um, and you get these fun little like generated stories. It's there's just a lot of really good love and flavor that went into this game. I highly, highly recommend it if you're into anything, either just like story driven, rim worldy kind of things, or going full like XCOM super tactical. It's also just like a very chill game um, because of the way it plays out. You can do everything at a very like steady pace. An example of like some of the cool flavor with this stuff. So okay, so here is a tavern. So the way that taverns work is you can just pay to get your uh, men drunk and they'll be in better spirits if they've been having drinks recently. But you can also um, re-roll to get random tips. So for example, this guy's talking about they being undead or right, whatever. Let's uh, pay for some rumors. Okay, what's here? We spotted something on our way here, hidden way off in the road in the step a long way west. Don't know what the locals call it, or if they even know about it, but it might be worth going back there. So for example, here's just like, hmm, there's something to the west. Okay, well, if I explore that, I might find, who knows? It could be a abandoned garrison. It could be full of undead. It could be full of brigands. It could be, you know, full of any kind of treasure. So it's the sort of thing you want to like go check out. And I just like how like there's just little sprinkles of flavor all over the place. So that's pretty neat. Um, so I've showed you how the tavernier stuff works, you like armorers, so again, like I come here to buy stuff. Um, temples, if you've got a severe injury, like my guy got a concussion, so he's got a bunch of negative stats, I can pay to get him treated at the temple so he heals faster. So yeah, um, now that I've kind of shown you the basics, I will now show you me getting absolutely stomped by this camp that I discovered earlier. So I got a quest to drive a bunch of nomads away from a camp. So I'm like, I can do that. Like, I'm still pretty early into the game. I'm not very good, but this is like a fresh save. I can take on some nomads. This should be fine. I should have been like 
tipped off by how much uh, gold they were giving me. That's another thing I should mention quickly um, before we get into the combat side of things. So when you complete missions, you get uh, crowns. You need the crowns to pay your troops. Every day you have to pay them. So you need to be maintaining an income that you can pay your troops, because if you can't pay them, they'll leave you. Likewise, you need to be buying food because your troops need provisions. You need to buy tools and supplies so you can repair your equipment in between battles, buying ammunition, buying medical supplies. Like, there's a lot to this game um, from a micro level, but it's it feels fun. It's not like when you play a game with like a tact on survival mode where every five minutes you need to drink and eat. Um, it becomes very natural and because you're going to all the towns anyway to either hire new troops, sell items or pick up quests, you're always traveling to different towns. So you might be like, oh, I like that one town because they have an abundance of grain and they always sell grain really cheap. Or on the opposite side of things, you might be like, I want to go explore the wilds, so I need to stock up on food beforehand. And the other thing which is neat about that, um, food spoils in this game. Um, so <laughs> there's like, a lot. basically, if you like management, this is like the ultimate game. There's so much stuff to manage, it's awesome. Okay, so prepare for combat. You can't make out who you'll be facing. Attack your own peril and be prepared to retreat if need be. Engage. So this is just like a nomad fight. Oh, wait. Uh-oh, these are undead nomads. So, it's a very XCOM-style combat system. You have a set amount of AP, action points. It costs action points to move. It costs action points to attack. It costs action points to swap items around in your, um, like, bags. You can't access your inventory, but you can access your bags. Um, also, because I already knew what this fight was, I should have better equipped my troops. Um for stuff which is good against fighting undead. Also, I find this guy funny. He lost his nose, so he got a permanent injury. So now he's got a missing nose. Stuff like that is kind of neat. So let's just see what they do. So I'll uh, wait out this turn and I'll see what the enemy troops do. Um, there are so many like small things to learn about this game. It is insane. So not only do you have things about like, okay, where do I position? What time of equipment do I use? Different equipment um, weighs different amounts, so that will affect your fatigue. And you need to, not only do you spend action points, you also need to manage your fatigue. So if your troops get tired, they can't do anything. And the reason why this is a really tricky fight is the enemy team has a necromancer. So what the necromancer will do is, if any of my guys die, he will raise them as undead. And when you kill the undead, He'll raise the undead. So you either need to focus down the necromancer as soon as possible, or you need to use cleavers to decapitate the undead, because you can't raise decapitated ones. So, yeah. So I either need to just, like, rush in and go straight for the necromancer, or try and, like, bait them out. This guy at the bottom here, uh, Broken Hassan, He's a guy who I bought who was terrible, and he got some permanent injuries. So what I do is I just put him on the wing, and I'm going to, like, just run him down and hopefully break up their formation. Um, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so he's come way forward. So we can probably just, like, focus this guy down. Um, right, let's fire a shot in. So I've got one crossbowman and I've got two terrible slingers who are fresh and their like range stat is trash. Um, I could maybe try and like circle them round and then snipe down the necro. Um, but I think for now I'm just gonna take this point blank shot. And that's another thing you need to uh, be careful of. You can fire like into your own troops, which means if you miss your target, you'll hit your own troops and stuff, which is pretty neat. And I'll uh, just pull him back one. So this is like my tank deed. I'm kind of tempted to push him forward and spear wall. Um, so spears have a special ability where you make a spear wall and anyone who moves into melee range, you get a free attack on them and you push them back if you land the attack. Kind of tempted to do that. This guy's been built just to be tanky. Oh yeah, this guy's got a fallen hero, which this is the first fallen hero I've found in the game so far. And he's got a really cool looking hat. Um, 
The art in this game is really neat. So I've been aware of this game since it came out in like 2017 or whatever. And I was always put off because at a glance, I'm like, oh, this just looks like a trashy mobile game. But the more you play it, the more you really learn to appreciate all the little details. And the way they do the icons is really clear. So at a glance, you can just be like, oh, I know what that weapon is. I know its stats. It, I know everything about it. And when you kill people, you can get their items back. And also, when you use items, they take durability damage. So for example, let's say that I wanted this guy's sword. I could be like, I don't want him to have a long drawn out fight. Because if he has a long drawn out fight, the weapon might get destroyed. So instead, I'm going to try and burn him down as quickly as possible. So he doesn't get to use his weapon. Um, so that when I win the fight, if I win the fight, I have a high chance of looting that. Likewise, if I wanted their armor, then I would want to make sure their armor doesn't take much damage. So I don't want to use attacks which maybe ignored um, the body. So only use weapons which hit the head. Or maybe use a dagger to just like puncture them down. Stabbing in between like the links of the armor. Like this game's really neat. <laughs> this is a really neat game. And I realize that if you know nothing about this game, you're like, Talhi, you've just spent 10 minutes making noise. And I have no idea what anything you said means. Um, but yeah, so he's dazed now. So that's cool. Um, I'm just going to pile into him, sort of. Let's just try and do as much damage as possible. And another thing which is cool about this game is it's got lots of just very good options. So for example, you could like, if there were a bunch of trees, you could just toggle to hide all the trees. Likewise, if you press this, it highlights in red the terrain you can't travel through. And you can just toggle on action points on and off and their health. So above the head, the red bar is their health. The next line up is their body armor. The top line is their helmet armor. Um, so you can see all the different health bars. So like at the start, maybe you want to turn this off, look at what everyone has, plan accordingly, then turn it back on and whatever. So this guy's got a weapon which can decap decapitate, which I think is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and clear through everything and just cut the heads off. So I'll move forward one. I'm just going to do a normal body shot. Pretty good. End my turn. Uh, this guy's got like no range, so I'll just take a pot shot. See if I land a hit. Okay, so that just hit his shield and didn't do anything. Uh, this guy's got a reach weapon, so he can attack over the top. And do I want to move him up one? I'm going to move him up one. Okay, I'm going to try and just go for a clean decap. Okay, I hit it, but he's got like one health left. So let's try again. And we missed. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Um, so this guy's using a two-handed spear, so he could also do the spear wall thing. I'm kind of worried that they might try and uh, circle around. So I could either move up one and attack and probably get the kill, but it wouldn't decapitate him. Or I could move down and spear wall. Um, the enemy AI is pretty good in this game, so they won't just, like, throw themselves into you if you've, um, used, like, stuff which will attack if they walk in a certain range. But that also means that you can then manipulate the AI by, like, for example, they won't want to move up here, so they'll want to go down here. Whereas if I put this guy here in Spearwolf, they'll probably funnel into the middle, which is, I think, what I want them to do. But I should probably just go for the kill. And we missed. <laughs> oh, damn it. All of my guys, this is very early game, so all my guys have got really low stats, so their chance to hit is very low. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull more down. Um, he can move one, two, three in his turn, so I don't want to stand there. But if I stand here, one, two, three, I don't think he can get me. That might maybe pull them down. Okay, so he's possessing that dude. I think I'm going to move up and go for the decap. Although this guy has an attack chain, he could just decap de decapitate as well. And if I move him up, then he could move to then attack. Um, I think I'm going to hold him there. 
I haven't got enough points to move forward attack. Move. Wait, do I? Three, four. Oh, no, I do. Okay, if I land the hit, we're good. No. <laughs> Uh, see, because I'm in his, like, melee range, I can't move back without provoking an opportunity attack. Okay. There we go. We got the decapitation. Look. So, um, I've got two foot of movement. This guy is probably going to go here. He'll go one, two, and attack. I think I want to move this guy... I could move him there, then he'll get swarmed. I can move him there, then he'll get swarmed. I could just move forward one. Also, when you move, that builds fatigue. I could also, I might just stay there. So I'm just gonna stay there. Okay, so it's me again. I think I wanna wait and see what the enemy does. Uh. My crossbowman, 48%. Really, I should be trying to get my crossbowman round to the necro. So if I try and move over that way. We missed. I'm not going to reload. I'm just going to move up and around. He's going to wait. He's going to wait. I'm just going to throw it into the clump. Oh, we actually got the hit. Nice. Right, so you're still trying to bait this guy out. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think if I go there, I'm safe. One, two, yeah. It's fine. He's possessing you. So this is like my tankiest dude, so I kind of want them to focus him. He's got a taunt ability, which I could use. I'm kind of tempted to move up and spear wall again. And I just kind of want them to all go for him. See, what's quite good is... Um, this terrain can't be passable, so if I stand near it, then it like it just prevents some shenanigans. Because uh, it's just like, it's one less hex that I could be surrounded on. I kind of like where he is now, though. I'm just going to do that and pass. 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 Again, I'm really bad at this game. So. Oh, they're completely ignoring my bait dude at the bottom. Hmm. Okay. All right, that's fine. So let's do some damaging. So another thing which happens in this game is based on what enemies are nearby, you get bonuses. So there's an adjacency bonus because I've got one guy there, so I get an extra 5% chance to hit. Um... He blocked it. Okay, that one hit and it destroyed his body armor. Cool. So. I should have probably moved that guy up in the previous turn. Let's just move you there. And end. I can move him forward one and attack with the reach. 50%, 65. Okay, his armor's down. Necro is going to do necro things. All right, tanky boy will go for an attack on. Uh, he's got a better chance to hit this dude. Fine. Forty-eight percent right. chance, sixty-three. Do I yolo the decap? <laughs> the problem with the decapitation is it uh, uses up more fatigue. Um, I want him to move forward one, so I'll move you around there. Okay. Don't actually have enough damage for that. 
56, 66. And I'm gonna use Adrenaline, which means that he gets to act first next turn. So now we can just lay in the hurt. Right, he's decapped, so he can't be rezzed. Nice. He's got like no fatigue left though, which kind of sucks. Got a shot and just keep moving around slowly. Okay, so this is actually going pretty well. This is the best attempt. I've done this. I've tried this fight. Um, I've jinxed it now. I've tried this fight twice, I think, before recording this video. I'm not going to move him. I'm just going to end the turn. If you wait to see what the enemy does, it slows you down in the next round. Um, there's lots of little things like that, which just goes through. They really thought about this game. Uh, again, I'm still trying to either just beat this guy up or pull away this beast. Uh, I think they can move. One, two, three, four. One, two. Th I think I'm safe there. Okay. Sling, bro. I don't want to slay into my own troops. Nice. Hit the guy in front. I'll just do the same here. That's fine. Miss lit again. All my I've got like two good troops, and then the rest of my guys are all trash. He blocked that. Nice. That's another decap. This is going pretty well. I don't know how scary this fallen hero is. All I know is he's got items I want. That's another decap. Nice. And um, people keep talking about fallen heroes on like the Reddit and stuff. So for all I know, this is like the scariest guy EU. Um, do I want to move forward or do I just want to hold? If I move forward, this guy will move and attack. I think I might just stay there. Alternatively, I could move up and then get a... If I move up, I'll get a bonus when that guy attacks. How tanky is this dude? 20? He's pretty tanky. Yeah, I got them. Step up. Get an adjacency bonus for this guy attacking into this one. Okay, we've got the second hit. Nice. So you're still trying to beat up you. Now you see here, he's fatigued out, so he didn't get his second attack in. He's moved forward and stabs. That's fine. So this guy is like my potential tank. This is my main tank. That guy could be my off tank. So we could move forward one and shoot this guy. Or we could move two to try and get over to the necro. Moving forward one and shooting is still slowly getting me to my goal. So I think I'm fine with that. That's a good bit of damage went in there. Nice hit. Do I want to move forward one? I think I will. Okay. Oh! Ow! Okay, that's really bad. That's really bad that he got three hits in. Because again, if my guys die, he will raise them. And I'm nowhere near killing this guy yet. That's really bad. Um... I think I want to... Mm. I could step up and attack this, and then between this guy and these two, you would hope that this guy would die. Uh, these two... 70% chance. I've got a good surround bonus. I mean, I'd have a good surround bonus there as well. This guy is wearing a shield, though, so it's less likely to hit. <laughs> Miss anyway, damn it. Okay. Uh, so I feel like if I move here, the Fallen Hero is just going to step forward and just clomp me on the head. So maybe if I get in position so that next turn I can attack. So I can move and attack. So that'd be... 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, attack. 1, 2... Oh, that's in range of him just clomping me there. So just go boom, boom, and then smack me for one. Oh, if I go there, there. 1, 2, 3... And again, if I get in his melee range, I can't move around him. I 
I just want to see what happens, sod it. Again, this guy's completely disposable. Alright. Uh. Oh, he actually got the hit? I was not expecting that. Okay, that's right. Oh, wow. My slingers are actually doing stuff? Oh, sick. Alright. Okay, got a head hit. It's fine. That's fine. Oh. I need to be careful. I keep feeling these guys have got three attacks. Good. Nice. Okay, so you've got... A big wound. I kind of... So if I just keep him here, then one of these guys will just come back to... Like, this guy's... Didn't get decapitated, so he's going to rise back up again. So I kind of want to pull this guy out of harm's way. Do I have a reach weapon in his bags? I don't. If I was smart, I would have put a reach weapon on him, then I could have pulled him back and attacked safely from range. I think I'm going to move... Oh, he has got the fatigue to move. He's stuck there. Okay. Miss. All that. It's fine. Right. Now, see all my guys are fatiguing out. That's the cool thing about zombies, is they're, they're undead, so they don't gain fatigue. So as my troops are getting weaker as the fight goes on, they're at the same strength. Um, so they're going to have much more powerful turns. Right. You just stay there, because this guy's going to resurrect. So we're not even going to move, because if you move, we'll gain fatigue. Um, every turn, you regain some fatigue. Ow. Oh, God. Right, that's really bad. <laughs> so he's one hit from just dying. Uh, right, okay. And again, if peeps die, they'll get resurrected. I've kept the neck up for way too long. Right, so let's move around. I need to, I need to get this guy down. I need to kill. This guy needs to die in this turn. Okay, good. That's really good that that landed. Okay. He has now come back up. Right, so if we go around... Okay, and then which... So what does this one do? So this is a well-placed slash attack like to inflict a debilitating injury. And it does 35 to 40... Well, that's plus 10 chance to hit there. 40% chance? 40% chance. Okay, we got it. Nice. It didn't do anything. Like, he didn't get an injury. But, uh... I bet this guy's going to step away from just like, bock him on the head. Okay. Um... No, he missed. He hit the shield, so nothing happened. Alright, can we get this guy down? No, hit the helmet again. I'm not confident. Oh, no. He missed. Oh, okay. All right, I'm just going to go for the decapitation. Blocked it. Oh, oh no. Okay, good. So that guy we lost, he was a new recruit. So I don't care that much about it. But I'm very much afraid... Him getting resurrected next turn. Okay, he didn't have the stuff to attack. Okay, that's good. That's bad. Relayed. If I step over one. No, you see, I was too. I should have moved more aggressively earlier. He's out of range. I'm not going to shoot this turn, though. Next turn, I'll have enough movement to move and shoot. So I'm just going to... Uh, actually, I'll just move forward another one so I'm closer next turn. Alright. This guy needs to die. Okay, that's good. He's going to attack before this guy gets to attack. So I need this guy to miss three attacks. Very unlikely. <laughs> But it could happen. Okay, he attacks. Good. 
Can I do anything to help that guy? Oh, and this guy's gonna move forward and attack him as well. Uh, this guy's pretty disposable. I could potentially just throw him there to try and keep this guy alive. But both these guys are like equally terrible. I think I'm just gonna take the pot shot. No, yeah, okay, it's fine. Likewise, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're just beating up the guy's helmet. Miss? <gasps> okay. You can do it. You can't do it. Okay. <laughs> Block. Good. All right. Okay. It's fine. Miss? Oh, okay. Okay, this is going well. Shouldn't have said that. I don't have enough action points to move forward and attack. And also, this guy's really beat up by that chest wound with the exposed rib, so his health is... Oh, God. If he gets, like, one hit, he just dies. Because he's got out of body armor completely, so it's just it goes straight to his health. I kind of just want to pull him back. Yeah, I'm just going to pull him back. Um, Step... And, okay, good at hit. Miss. Okay. He's still alive, though. Ah, uh, he raised my dude. Uh, the BM. Okay, so he's dead. Let's move you down. Oh, his turn's done. So he, he, he used up his turn in getting resurrected. Okay, he's... Okay, good. Good, good, good. Fifty-three percent chance to hit. Okay, I could move for the closer I am, the higher chance I have to hit. The problem I have is I move too far forward. Then once this guy's beaten my uh, trash dude here, he'll just run up and just clomp me. So I think I'm gonna stay at range. Raise another dude. Don't want to move. Okay, cool. Miss, let. See, like, all of my guys are fatigued out. I'm just going to let them sit at the back and gain some energy. Oh, God. <laughs> all my guys are screwed. This is, this is where we lose the fight. We're just going to get attritioned out. Yeah, he's down. Uh-oh. He's gonna go through all my whole back line now, isn't he? Okay, good. Not good. Not good. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get a cleave on him. Decap, good. Did he have a cleaver in his bags? Okay. Come on. <laughs> and he's gonna move. Uh, I'm just gonna keep him there. Yeah, this is a, this is a wipe. I also have the issue that even if we win this fight this much, we've lost like. We've kind of lost too much to go forward. This brings up a really interesting point about this game um, and how I feel like this game has the perfect balance of hardcore and softcore. So you can play this game in the sense that you never like save scum, you never reload fights and it's just like, okay, you roll with the punches. I lost like two of my best guys. That's fine. You keep going forward. That's how I generally play. And then if you get a total wipe, then your run's over and you can be like, okay, do I want to start again with a new company or maybe do I want to redo that fight? The reason why I feel like it's pretty well balanced in that sense is if you, like, a fight goes really poorly for you and you have to replay it, then you're still, like, losing the time it took you to do the fight. And it's, like, 20, 30 minutes, but also you're learning. And every time you redo a fight, it's not exactly the same. The terrain is slightly different. 
uh, where there's elevation, high ground, low ground, where there's impassable terrain changes, and the AI will change. So it's never the exact same thing every single time. So while yes, you could argue that it's like, oh, it's broken because you just like, no, I need to, it's too squishy. I'm just gonna keep them there. Um, like you never get punished or whatever and you just save scum everything. I think it's actually incredibly well balanced in that sense. So yeah, I, I rate this game. That wasn't already obvious. Um, so he can't use his sling and point blank, so I may as well just shove a club on him. And uh, he blocks it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Because this is a bit where all my trash troops now just get cleaned up. Okay, so that's. Uh, I mean, he's good. He's close to dying, but annoying. Okay. okay. I have a cleaver on him. We don't have enough cleavers. I kind of should keep him alive and only go for a killing blow, which would um, decapitate. Okay, so he's just going full bodyguard, apparently. He's just not. Yeah. Hmm. I think I'm gonna be YOLO. Okay, he blocks it. Okay. He's gonna move forward one. I haven't got enough AP. Hmm. So now he's blocking him. Can I get there? Still blocking him. Bastard. One, two. Oh, he can now rush it. Oh, yeah. He's going to screw him. Um, right. I can step up one, which stops that guy from moving. Which I need to do to protect him. I'm kind of tempted to lose my shield. <sighs> okay, so he's... In d perfect range to get decapitated. So let's see if we can just soften. Oh, he's, he's super soft. I mean, we've still, like, once we got this down, we've still got to get down this fallen hero. And he just keeps resurrecting my dudes. Oh, no. Alright, decap, go. No! <laughs> Decap, go! Good. Right, he's still super squishy, so I don't really want to put him in harm's way. Although all my dudes are super squishy. Um, I could move him forward so that next turn I can attack. He'll probably die, but sort of. He'll probably die. Oh, that guy's already used his turn. I don't know, we might be alright. Okay. There's not enough damage to get the decapitation, so I'm just going to go for a normal hit. Damn it. And see, he's got bleeds. So he's just going to slowly bleed out. He's going to raise another one of my dudes. Okay, good. Softening him up a bit. Damn it. Raise another dude. Uh, see, he's dead now. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Okay. Okay. I'm just playing this out so you guys can see it at this point. Um, he's not dead. <laughs> but yeah, so this is an example of me being inexperienced not playing the fight particularly well and going into probably too challenging of a fight too early on like my like my characters just aren't physically strong enough and well geared enough enough for it but i'm hoping that from this very long video um 
you guys will have grown to learn why I think this game is very neat. <laughs> you passed it. And also hopefully get some appreciation for the XCOM level RNG. Um, but I will just let you guys have the satisfaction of watching my troop get completely destroyed. You can retreat from fights. And also, I like I didn't even have to do this fight. But, um... Where's the fun in that? Oh, God. Every run I do, I land something. Which is important. And I'm slowly getting better. Very slowly. But, you know, we're getting there. Okay, so crossbows you can still fire... Oh, you can't reload them though. Damn it. I was going to say, you can still fire a crossbow in melee. So, um... Oh, I'm out of ammunition. I, I still have to reload. Oh, that was dumb. What I should have done is I should have swapped my mace. I was equipping using... I should have swapped my mace gone for the stun, and then maybe run. Um... Yeah, that's the first time I've had someone run out of ammo. So, I could go for the puncture... Which would guarantee kill him if it hit. Cool. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> this is why decapitation is pretty good versus these guys. It's also why killing the necromancer is pretty good versus these guys. Um, I'm surprised my troops haven't panicked yet. So it's got a system similar to Darkest Dungeon. Where you can hit their resolve. And if situations seem too desperate, then they will just panic and they will flee. So I think this guy's fleeing. Yeah, he, this guy's fleeing now. He, he's taking too much of a beating. So that means that it will skip my next turn and he's going to try and just run. Which means he's going to get hit with a bunch of opportunity attacks. Which isn't going to go very well for him. Yeah. The decapitations are very satisfying. Okay. See, he hasn't got the energy to go for the knockout. Okay, I think I'm gonna... See if we YOLO. No. Right. Fortunate John isn't gonna be that fortunate. So he's now fleeing. We've lost a vision of that. And that is our guys down. So yes, that is Battle Brothers. Hopefully my terrible explanation sold this game to some of you. Um, I really recommend it. Um, if that looked even remotely interesting, I highly suggest picking it up. And again, um, it does have quite a lot of DLC. So if you are going to play it and you're watching this before the Steam Summer Sale runs out, I would highly recommend picking it up. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm just shouting this game out because I think it is really cool. And uh, with the PoE League still a few weeks away, highly recommend spending a couple of weeks playing this. But yes, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Let me know if you enjoyed this kind of like indie shout out video, by the way. If you did, I will do more of them because I've got quite a few indie games I've been playing a lot of recently that I think are neat. And maybe you guys will think they're neat too. But yes, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Bye bye.